Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. I love pepper balls. I think they have a really nice uh, application for crowd control. They're also very useful in certain situations where a person is in an enclosed space. This is a, a video today where we have an individual a pepper ball was used. It was a semi-enclosed space. Results were more of what I would consider a worst case scenario. Sometimes you can do things exactly textbook, uh, get the shot on target, but how the person responds is something that you unfortunately can't control. So in this video, what, what we have is a situation where the police have a guy cornered or he was trying to break into a house, but we have an officer who's got a pepper ball launcher and he fires a single pepper ball at the, um, the guy in the garage. Now the guy in the garage has two knives and I, he may even have something else additionally on his leg down around his ankle. Uh, but he's got two really large knives. And, and so when the video starts, you'll see the garage doors opening and we'll see him. Uh, the use of a pepper ball in that situation is something that I think is, is a reasonable choice. But I think what you're going to see from this video and, and it surprised me, and I know I've always heard heard stories about how uh, you need to keep distance and how important spacing is, and police always, uh, you know, are very cognizant of that. I think as a, as citizens, we we really don't appreciate just how um, much space we need to keep uh, in terms of others, and how quickly someone can breach our space. So before I talk about that anymore, let's let's roll the video. So the police officer with the pepper ball launcher is the one that has the body cam footage that you're seeing here. They're getting ready to raise the garage door. It's going up right now. So let's just see how they chose to approach the situation. There's an officer to the left and you've got the guy on the right with the pepper ball launcher. And the first decision, this guy goes up and realizes, wait, this is a mistake. This is an armed guy. He's very upset. And so they're going to decide to go with the with the pepper ball to see if they can defuse the situation. Uh, it's it's a reasonable idea. Uh, there's there's a there's a chance that the the powder could affect him, and that it could defuse the situation. So they make that shot, and it's a great shot, right? As you would want. But look, he just he charged, and and it's over before you can even know it. It's really what I would consider a worst case scenario. You do not want a person with a knife charging you within that 20 feet distance they can breach that space so quickly and if you only had the pepper ball launcher and you can see here from the other officers can there there's just not much time this guy's charging with two knives one basically he's i think he's trying to go for each officer he, he's out to cause harm and and that's just plain and simple what we're seeing there so there you have it. I, I think there's a couple take home points that are, are important to emphasize here. One is if the guy is determined that he wants to cause you harm and you fire a pepper ball at him and it looks like uh, looking at it a little closer, it may have been two shots that were really rapid fire and, and theoretically it could have been three depending on the launcher. They, they do have the ability to do three round bursts. Whatever it was, it was it wasn't more than one or two shots. You can see the powder hit him on the back. Uh, he he sort of turned. Uh, he got hit in the back, and so the 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 powder went up behind him. It did not really affect him, uh, and he did it, it, he did what he wanted to do to sort of avoid that. But he made a very quick decision that he wasn't going to turn back around. He wasn't going to continue to get hit with pepper balls. So again, it's an example similar to one of my prior videos where. The pepper ball was um, introduced into the situation to de-escalate, and you really have very little other options. You can you can use a pepper ball, or you can use other less lethals. And I do believe that in many cases, the less lethal that is used in these situations is the less lethal that they happen to have on hand in their car. Uh, sometimes it'll be a, a shotgun with beanbag rounds. A lot of times it'll be a taser. In this particular video, they went with the pepper ball. And so they have these options. I don't think every officer has every option at all times. So, so depending on the budgets of different uh, officers in different cities, 
they may have less lethals and some places may not have less lethal options and that's just not even even considered but in this particular case they gave it a try and and similar to the prior video where the guy was out on the street in this video uh, they got a direct hit they did not go on the ground and try to create a cloud in the garage to get him to come out they went for the direct hits they got some kinetic impact they got some cloud but what I take away from this is that in that split second moment, this guy had to decide, and I think he had already made up his mind that he was not going to be taken by the police. I believe that uh, looking at it again, I think that was probably the homeowner, the guy who went up initially and, and went up to his trash can. I think he was going to, to to grab his recycling bin to try to get, get in uh, behind it in order to defend himself. Uh, but I believe that was probably the homeowner, and I believe this was a guy that got caught trying to break into a home. But he had two knives, and when you have two knives versus a pepper ball launcher, I, I would not advise it. Uh, I don't think it's in your best interest to be using pepper balls. Now, whether this is from pepper ball brand, or you're using your Berna, or you're using uh, uh, some sort of T4E marker with pepper balls, I just think these are limited when you're dealing with a single person in and they have a gap and they have a lethal weapon with them when it's a lethal weapon you do not use your less lethal so i would not advise a civilian doing what they did here and you can see how it turned out they end up he charges and the real stopping power comes from the pistol from the firearm and that's that put him down and so you can make an argument well why police don't tune up their pepper ball launchers or other air powered launchers to come up in power well the, the reality is they don't need to do that they 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 have the backup they can switch uh, they go from the pepper ball if that fails they have the backup and in a lot of these cases you'll find that the less lethal and the lethal are used boom 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 it, there there very is there's not usually a lot of time in between uh it's it's a rapid escalation of force and and the police did the right thing here. They they go home to their families. They did not get stabbed. They did the right thing. So these are difficult situations. These are difficult videos to um, to digest. It's not something that we enjoy looking at. But I think we have to educate our mind. Watch these types of videos, and do a reality check uh, and think about our EDC carry with our air-powered launchers, are, are we truly able to stop a threat at a reasonable distance with, with our air-powered launcher uh, if we're packing pepper balls or we have some kinetic pepper ball mix? A lot of times we convince ourselves because it's wishful thinking. We want to think that it will work because that's what we have. Maybe that's what we can carry in our country, in our city, in our state. But the reality is if that person is determined enough you will not be able to stop them unless all of the conditions just happen to be absolutely perfect. And this was just an example of what I consider a worst case scenario. If the guy just charges, you literally have a second to make a decision. And if you just had a pepper ball launcher, your option there is to run, fight. Uh, you can keep firing and you can do headshots, but you can see how difficult that would be uh, in a real world situation when the person is charging. So we always imagine these things in our mind, but when we see them on video and we see how the police are dealing with it, I think it helps us a lot in terms of our strategy. And the more different angles and different ways that we can see less lethal applications applied, uh, the better. And that's something that I hope that this channel can continue to bring you in the future. Think about your self-protection with a realistic filter. Uh, don't uh, look at things in a more uh, dreamy uh, point of view. Um, be realistic um, and, and, and think about what's the best way for you to protect yourself from um, a serious lethal threat. All right, everybody take care. See you in, in the next one.